Hello and welcome to another Reaper vlog tutorial. Today we're looking at Reaper 5.962. And as always, you can find the full change log in the help menu. Click on change log what's new. Uh, it's also on the website and the user guide is usually updated with this stuff as well. All right, so we're gonna start off with render wildcards. And if you're not familiar with render wildcards, if you open up the render to file window, uh, either from the main toolbar or from the file menu, file render, you have these options called wildcards, which will take data from your project and insert it into the file name for you. So right now this says untitled, but I'm gonna change this to one of the new wildcards, which is um, start timecode. And so if I have a time selection here, it will put in that starting timecode um, into the file. Another new one is end timecode, right below that. It's got end timecode. We also have start frames, end frames, and length frames. As well as regular um, uh, length in minutes and seconds and length in beats. So just to summarize those new changes, we have start timecode, end timecode wildcards, start frames, end frames, length frames for absolute uh, frame units. We also have start seconds, end seconds, length seconds, and length, length beats wildcard. And that pretty much covers everything that we need to do in wildcards for the rendered file window. Next up, there's a new preset for the video processor. So I'm gonna bring up the video window. And I got this nice video of some donuts here. And this new preset is actually for blurring, created by www.maze, and then it was modified by Justin. So uh, this is a really useful preset to have. So I'm gonna set this down to zero. And there's the original video, looks pretty nice. You know, if you want to do um, sort of a blur fade in, you can uh, use this preset. So I'm going to put it up to max, and it's, you know, just a complete mess. But right around 0 0.5 looks pretty natural, and we can go a little bit further. Let's just set this to about there. I'm going to put in a new track, and I'll put in a media item, and put on that video processor, put on a title using my text overlay and there we go that's that can make a uh, a nicer sort of background image so that's without and with a bit of blur makes it a little bit nicer and let's look at these other options why modifier kind of shifts it a little bit up and down it's a little hard to to see what's changing there but slightly tweaking the look of that uh, blur. But we can also enable or disable the direction of the blur. And this is helpful if you want a certain effect where we want this blur to look like it's um, you know, moving in and out. We're probably going to want a, a left and right blur. Moving up or down, we have these other options. So with them all on, it's kind of just a, a normal Gaussian blur. If we're automating something, moving a video, we won't have blur on it automatically and it can look really unnatural. But let's say we're moving to the to the right, we might wanna have this right word style of blur uh, just in the in-between uh, frames between the beginning and end as that video moves to the side and it can make it look a lot more natural. <laughs> For someone that makes video in Reaper, this is going to be really cool. A few months ago, we got this option in Project Settings Advanced called Enable Preserve Pitch When Changing Rate for New Items. The default is on, and so that when we change the, uh, the play rate of a media item, it's going to keep the original pitch. It's going to pitch shift in real time so that uh, it retains its same sort of tonality. The toggle in the project settings is now just going to turn that off 
for new imported items. So I will enable or I will disable that option here. Then grab another file and drag that in. And if I double click here, you can see that that setting is off. So when we import something with Temple Match off, it's always going to use the project setting. When we have Temple Match on, it's going to use the Media Explorer's setting. So if I grab this file here and drop it in and double click, you can see that it is turned on. And that is because we have this setting in the Media Explorer's options preserve pitch when tempo matching. So I'm going to turn that off and grab another file, drag and drop that in. If I double click here, it's turned off. So just keep in mind that if you're tempo matching with the Media Explorer, you have to select the option here. And if you are not, then your items will follow this one here. Okay. And once again, so the default is to have that on in both places. Now we're looking at Reaper's compressors and the new knee behavior. Improved knee behavior just means that it's going to work like other compressors, uh, you know, like the textbook example of how the knee is supposed to work. So let's say I have my threshold around minus 12 and I have my knee size at 6 dB, then at minus 18 dB, it's going to um, compress with uh, half the ratio. So it'll be two to one if I'm at four to one. So besides that changing for the defaults, there's also the old behavior, which is this weird knee option, uh, which is just a little bit different. It's, it's hard to explain. There's a link in the change log where you can see the thread where they explain the differences. It has a different sound. It's not something that you always run into where it's weird, but yeah. So the old presets will use that weird knee option um, and any, anything that you've saved yourself um, are going to have that weird knee option on. So if you want to turn that off so it's more predictable or then resave that preset. And so the same thing actually goes for Rex Comp. We don't see that weird knee um, option here, but we can toggle that behavior by right-clicking in the graph area. There's this quirks submenu and classic knee. Classic knee is the same as weird knee. And that's all I wanted to show in this video. There's a lot more to this update. Uh, lots of little things, things that are a little bit more difficult to demonstrate, um, rare bugs and, and things like that. So. Uh, check out the change log, and if you've missed any of these update videos, there's a playlist right here so you can catch up on all the previous update uh, new features. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.